African proverb says the child who is not embraced by the village will burn it down to feel the warmth. What time in your life have you been closest to starting the fire? For some reason or another, my mother hated me. As a little girl I could never understand why she treated me so much worse than my three other siblings. And I would often go up to my grandmother and ask her, why doesn't my mama love me? She never could give me a straight answer and would tell me, your mama loves you in the only way. She knows how. That answer confused me because she loved my siblings just fine. Disclaimer. Her love was toxic f. And she did a different type of damage to my other siblings. Now when I say that my mother treated me badly, it started out with her picking fights with me. She would constantly nitpick at everything I did, chastising me, and at the end of the day punishing me harshly for something that could have been a gentle scolding. When I got older, she started cussing at me, and calling me names. She would often ignore me for days on end, and when she would talk to me it would be to make me the butt end of a bad joke, or to tell me she hated me. Yes. My mother looked me dead in my eyes and told me she hated me. Disclaimer number two, she was a drug addict and alcoholic. And she loves to claim all the emotional abuse she put me though as a child was the effects of the drugs. And it wasn't even that bad. It was things like that that really began to tear at me after a while. All sorts of terrible things she did to me growing up. The terrible things she said and how she ignored me constantly. All of it very different than how she treated my other three siblings. She was very close with one of my brothers and my sister. She would spend time with them constantly, take them anywhere, buy them anything that they wanted and it made me resent them. My sister would sometimes rub it in my face that mom loved her more. It was her way of having power over me and it was one of the things that made my rage bubble over on innocent people. I just wanted to be loved and accepted. I wanted to be cared for and cherished as a child should be. And when I didn't get that, I plotted on how I was going to get her love and affection. In my screwed up mind, I thought that if I got rid of my older brother and younger sister, I would be one of the only people left for her to love. I planned on killing my brother. How screwed up is that? It wasn't just some thought that passed through my head. It was a constant idea. A plan that I was putting into place to end his life so that I could make room in my mother's heart. For me, I feel ashamed writing it out. It was a dark time in my life. And I was also incredibly mentally ill. My brother was addicted to pain medications and my parents were trying desperately to get him clean at the time. Ironically, at the same time he was going on a drug-induced rampage. My sister had shattered her leg on a trampoline. She was on some pretty heavy pain pills. And while my mother was doing everything in her power to keep my brother away from the drugs, she would leave my sister and her drugs in my care. So one day, while my mother was out dealing with my brother and my sister was sleeping, I took the rest of her pills. My sister was super afraid of becoming addicted to drugs after watching what my mother and brother were going through, so there was a ton left. And I waited for my brother to come back. When I heard him come through his window, his room was next to mine. I went into the kitchen and made him a glass of juice. Earlier in the day I had crushed up the pills into a powder, and I mixed them into the juice. I went up to his room, knocked on the door, and offered him the cocktail of various prescription drugs. He took the juice, and right before he was about to drink it I had thought, how could I do this to my own brother? I snatched the drink back, and it spilled all over the carpet. He was high and super pissed. But at least he was alive. I never tried anything like that again. It felt so sick, wrong, evil. I mean, 
what type of person thinks about killing their brother. Besides, my brother dying wouldn't make my mother love me any more. She would have just resented me for living instead of him. So that's the sad, sick story of how I almost executed my brother. I didn't actually carry through with it. Obviously. And I guess everyone lived happily ever after. My brother got clean and now has a happy family. I'm in college. My sister's leg healed up nicely. And my mom left us after a while. But that's a story for another time. I have two sisters, one older, and one younger. My mom worked hard to make sure each of us felt special and loved. My dad, not so much. He called my older sister princess and my little sister was referred to as little buddy. For whatever reason, I got kind of forgotten about. I didn't mind most of the time. I found my dad annoying demanding, and at times unreasonable. I hated the way he bullied my mom and would lash out about things that didn't make sense. Basically, I thought of my dad as a total brat. He'd have a bad day at work, and would find someone to take it out on. Usually, my mom and I, but I still tried. I'd try to cuddle up with him, feeling hurt when he'd shrug me off and tell me I need to shower. I made gifts for him, got good grades, won poetry contests, won awards through Bible quiz, never argued, but it never seemed to work. Before long, he'd find something to yell at me about, things that usually didn't make sense. If my little sister and I fought, the whole thing was my fault. My feet turn in, I hated when my dad would come to my sporting events, because seeing me run with intern feet seemed to be humiliating for him. One time I was running from one base to another, feeling exhilaration because I'd done it. I'd hit a home run. The smile died on my face when I heard my dad yell, Run with your feet straight. You look stupid. As a teen, my mom really stepped up and started insisting that he was going to leave me alone. He was never physically abusive, but the way he talked to you made you feel like he was trying to say something that would break you. When I was 15, he was almost successful. I went through a couple of really bad months. A friend died. My dog died. We moved, and my mental health was tanking. A week after my friend died. Car accident. My dad asked, so when are you going to get over it? It took me by surprise, because at that time, I wasn't crying or acting out. I was just sitting there, eating dinner with the family. My mom immediately reacted, gasping out a surprised, John, and the two of them began fighting again, over my dad's need to mess with me. I sat there, head down on the table, thinking, asterisk I'm not allowed to be sad, I'm not allowed to feel happy. I can't get mad, I'm in pain, and he finds it annoying. Just leave me alone, dad, leave me alone, asterisk. That's when it clicked. My dad, for whatever reason, seemed to hate me. I could try to make him like me, but it wasn't going to work. As I got older, my goal became to avoid him. His seemed to be to forge a relationship with me with the sole purpose of having a target for his need to bully. We were never going to have a healthy father-daughter relationship, that's when it clicked. It's not me, it's him. My sisters could like and love him, but I didn't need to respect him. I was done trying to please him, trying to do the right things, trying to be the daughter that my dad seemed to want. Fast forward almost 10 years later, after the birth of my son, my dad had tried to begin a new relationship with me, because for whatever reason, he latched onto my kid. For the sake of my kid, I let my dad have a relationship with him, but I was always monitoring, waiting for my son to develop a personality that would change the way my dad saw him. There was no way I was going to let my dad do to my son what he did to me. Fortunately, 
My dad died before the change could happen. I sat in the back at his funeral, dry-eyed and satisfied. Of course my sisters were upset. They had good relationships, but for me and my mom, it kind of felt like the wicked witch was at long last dead. No more stress, no more unreasonable expectations. The eggshells we'd been walking on were swept away, and we could be content. I have an uncle in West Virginia that I started to see as my father figure. At first, I jokingly would call him dad, testing the waters, waiting for him to remind me that he actually has kids and doesn't need an adopted daughter. I go see him once a year, but I always felt like maybe he sees my need to see him as a dad to be annoying. A couple of weeks ago, I asked him if he was coming up for Christmas. He said he couldn't, but then he said, I love you, my daughter. Sorry this was so long. I guess I needed to get that out. 16 years old, finally decided to fight back against abusive parents. Only had to do it once to stop the physical abuse. The brain fucks kept happening. I didn't grow up with the best family. There was a long period of time where there was constant fighting. And things often went too far. I didn't feel safe in many different ways. It all culminated to a point when I was 17, disowned, and about to get kicked out. But, my vindictive, defensive actions in the past made my mother know that kicking me out wasn't a good idea. I know the only reason I could have a roof over my head was Becca who say my mom isn't a citizen. And she knew I would have reported her for the crime of child abuse. Which did happen. Which would have put her residency in jeopardy. So, I guess I had to threaten to burn the village in order to feel the warmth of safety. When I was a teenager living in rural Alabama, I did not get along with my stepmother. She went out of her way to be as mean as she could to me. Once when she left the house, she took the mouse for the family computer with her so I couldn't use it while she was gone. Well, I did her one better by taking a cord from the back, then locking myself in my bedroom until she got home. She uses my little baby stepsister against me and tells her to tell me she has a present for me. As soon as I unlock the door, stepmother yanks it out of my hand and starts screaming at me about why the computer won't work. Well, let me tell you, on both sides of me I had a steel pole lying against the wall and a simple glass of water. I briefly entertained the notion of smashing her in the face with the pole, and instead just chucked a harmless water in her face. Woo, I'm quite sure I avoided jail that night. I had a co-worker at a non-commission-based retail job where a co-worker would repeatedly sabotage my sales so she could get a lot of CR. I used to work in fast food and was the only person in the store that didn't smoke. Everyone else got to take a break to smoke. But since I didn't smoke, I wasn't allowed to. Eventually, I spoke to the owner about it and was rebuffed. So I went over their heads to the company board. Owner got his attitude out for rebuffing me and I wound up getting a huge bonus my next paycheck. But when they discovered I reported them, I got fired immediately. Turns out they'd been violating company policy in food prep and storage. So I filed another report to corporate. Store got shut down for months and my former boss got fined six figures. My dad didn't seem to take any interest in my life since I was four. Then when my mum left him and I told him I was going to leave he then proceeded to do everything to get me to live with him, buying me stuff, telling me mum isn't a fit parent, trying to get custody in court. I decided to live with him because I was too scared to start a new school midway through the year. He then dates this woman who was pretty much the catalyst in destroying their marriage and gets mad at me when I don't treat her like a mother. Mum is now trying to get custody and I would burn his house to the ground if it meant she would win. 
Don't forget to share, like and subscribe for more content.